Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Canada spends nearly $20 billion annually on its military in the coming federal election on October 19th, that is this coming Tuesday. How that $20 billion is spent? For what purpose? Allied with whom are points of debate. In a recent interview we did with Justin Pudder and Richard Sanders, the Real News discussed what the NDP, Liberals and the Conservatives have to say about military spending and Canada's presence abroad, but we unintentionally left out the Green Party's position while suggesting the story included it. Now joining me to discuss the Green Party's position on military expenditure and arms dealings is Dimitri Laskaris. He's running to become a member of Parliament for London West, uh, riding in Ontario as a member of the Green Party. When he's not doing that, Dimitri Laskaris is a partner with the Canadian law firm Siskins, where he heads the firm's class action practice and he's also a member of the Real News Network's board. Dimitri, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Sharmini. Dimitri, uh, first let me give you an opportunity to address the Green Party platform on military spending and our presence abroad in the various wars at hand. Sure. Um, an, an important piece of background information uh, uh, to help uh, your audience understand our position is that uh, the Harper government, the current conservative government, uh, has committed Canada to purchase F-35 stealth fighter craft, uh, fighter jets, which uh, are estimated to cost ultimately $44 billion. You know, for Canada, which has an economy that's approximately one-tenth the size of that of the U.S., that's a lot of money, uh, which could be used for a variety of much more socially positive uh, purposes like uh, strengthening our health care system. Our party uh, is opposed to the purchase of the F-35 stealth fighter jets. Uh, the NDP, the, historically the progressive party in Canada, uh, has not ruled it out but wants to subject the procurement process to a higher degree of scrutiny. So they're leaving the door open, surprisingly and disappointingly, to purchasing these jets. Uh, the Liberal Party is saying uh, we should buy a better jet, uh, one that has a proven track record. I think their focus is on the F-16. So ultimately, neither of them is categorically rejecting the purchase of these jets. We, are, we categorically reject them, and we do that for a couple of reasons, one of which is they're very badly designed and they're suffering from extensive cost overruns. They, you know, experts who have flown the plane say the F-35 is a very poor dogfighter. Uh, recently, a report came out uh, that found that uh, at certain speeds, when the pilot ejects, the pilot's neck is liable to snap. There's a host of design defects in this plane. It's a complete nutter boondoggle, and on that basis alone, we shouldn't be buying it. But more broadly, it isn't really a defensive weapon. You know, uh, an anti-fighter uh, missile system would be a defensive weapon. These, these fighter jets are being sent abroad to wage wars in distant countries uh, for non-defensive purposes, as far as I'm concerned. And so we are against uh, buying them or some other type of fighter craft, and we want to reorient the military in our country to uh, its more historic orientation of uh, peacekeeping uh, and uh, poverty alleviation and disaster relief efforts. And rather than buy these uh, expensive boondoggle jets, which are ultimately made to wage war and uh, cause destruction and death, we want to buy uh, fixed wing search and rescue planes, icebreakers, and uh, replace some dangerous old military hardware to ensure threats to our military are not posed uh, by the aging equipment that we give to them. But really, the main thrust is we want to reorient our military uh, to peacekeeping. Uh, and I think that that is a decidedly different from position than either of the other parties, uh, is than any of the three other parties is adopting. And it, it's consistent with the foundational uh, principles of the Green Party. One of the foundational principles of the Green Party globally is the pursuit of peace. Uh, and that's why we opposed, we were the only party that opposed Canada's participation in the bombardment of Libya, which created a failed state which gave uh, Islamic ex violent extremists a foothold in the country that they didn't have previously, which is exacerbating the refugee crisis in the Mediterranean. We oppose the bombardment of Syria. Uh, we, impose, we oppose the bombardment of Iraq. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, our message of peace is not getting out to the public because, uh, for example, our leader is being kept out of the debates despite the fact that 81 percent of Canadians want her in them. Uh, so, you know, we have to work overtime to... Uh, help the public understand that we really have staked out a different 
uh, position from the other three parties on the issue of military spending and the orientation of our military. And Dimitri, give us a take on the Green Party's positions on the secret arms uh, dealings that are going on with Saudi Arabia and Canada. Yeah, so uh, I, I want, let me say at the outset that this is a difficult uh, issue for those who are running in my community, London, Ontario, a city of around almost 400,000 people in southern Ontario, because we have here, not in my riding, but in a riding next to mine in London, uh, the gen a general dynamics plant that is uh, manufacturing arms for the Saudi government. It's a multi-billion dollar company contract, which was approved by the conservative Harper government, and uh, reportedly it accounts for approximately 3,000 manufacturing jobs here in London, which has been particularly hard hit uh, in the last several years by the loss of manufacturing jobs. The Economist recently called this part of the country, Southern Ontario, the new Rust Belt, and with good reason. And so uh, local officials are very loath to uh, say anything negative about that agreement, and in fact, uh, the Conservatives are enthusiastically championing the agreement, and the Liberal Party, which seems the party that uh, is best poised at the moment to take the reins of power from the Conservatives, has said quite clearly that they also support the contract. And so that's the background. And uh, you know, one other important fact: that people, it's widely known that Saudi Arabia has uh, a, a terrible human rights record. But I think it would be instructive for us just to visit the most recent report of. Amnesty International in Saudi Arabia, and I want to just read to you a few excerpts to really bring home just how abominable uh, this government's, the Saudi regime's human rights record is. And uh, briefly, Amnesty reported in its 2014 and 15 uh, report on Saudi Arabia that the government severely restricted freedoms, freedoms of expression, association, and assembly, and cracked down on dissent, arresting and imprisoning critics, including human rights defenders. Uh, torture of detainees was reportedly common. Courts convicted defendants on the basis of torture-tainted confessions and sentenced others to flogging. Women faced discrimination in law and practice and were inadequately protected against sexual and other violence, despite a new law criminalizing domestic violence. And the authorities made extensive use of the death penalty and carried out dozens of public executions. And in Saudi Arabia, uh, in the last 12 months, 175 executions occurred. The courts there allow executions for things like uh, adultery, apostasy, and witchcraft. It's really a barbaric regime, and uh, there, there there's widespread reports and compelling evidence that at this very moment in time, uh, the Saudi regime is engaged in war crimes in Yemen. In the last uh, two weeks, uh, two wedding parties were struck by uh, Saudi aircraft or Saudi-led coalition aircraft, and 150 civilians were killed, uh, the majority of whom were women. These weren't militants who were targeted. So this is an abominable regime. Be and uh, the question that the, I have to ask in good conscience is, if we're going to sell arms to this regime, to what regime would we not sell arms? Uh, and uh, in good conscience, I cannot support this agreement. The Green Party cannot support this agreement. And we have to find another way to give those 3,000 employees a good living. And I, I condemn in uh, the strongest possible terms uh, the government of this country and other parties in this country who are pitting, effectively pitting, workers who are simply trying to support their families against the victims of Saudi human rights abuses. They shouldn't be put to that choice. They should be given an opportunity uh, to uh, gainfully employ themselves and support their families without having to build arms for one of the world's worst violators of human rights. And uh, that is something that's eminently within our capacity to do as a government. And further, this it. apparently uh, violates our export control uh, regulations, which forbids exporting arms to countries where they have a human rights record the way you describe it. Sure. Uh, I think there's a strong case to be made that it does violate the law. Uh, the government has been very secretive about what, if any, assurances it was given. Uh, by the Saudi regime, it's not clear that it was given any assurances at all about the uses to which these arms would be put. Uh, and therefore, uh, there is every possibility that this is vi a violation of Canadian domestic law. But quite apart from that, if you're dealing with a government that is prepared to engage in these atrocities, what possible assurances could they give that we would trust or could trust? You know, I would say a government that has shown itself to be so disrespectful of uh, the most basic human rights of its own citizens and the citizens of other neighboring countries, uh, there are no assurances it can give that we can trust. Right. Uh, the only way that we can ultimately assure ourselves that we are not facilitating the abuse of human rights 
is to uh, not engage in the arms trade with countries like Saudi Arabia. What about uh, Israel? Now, the other parties have come out uh, very strongly in support of the state of Israel, but they're also involved in human rights violations of Palestinians, as we saw last summer. And, uh, and the Canadian government and the other parties have clearly come out in support of that state. Uh, where's the Green Party on that? Well. Uh, the Green Party has uh, taken a moderate position, I would say, uh, more protective of Palestinian rights uh, than that of the three major parties. And uh, we have repeatedly called for the creation of an independent and viable Palestinian state uh, along the 1967 borders. Uh, but I must say, uh, and I say this, uh, you know, with some... Uh, uh, with a, a degree of disappointment, frankly, about the issue, that our party could take a stronger stand on the issue of the rights of the Palestinian people. The fact of the matter is that uh, under uh, the International Court of Justice held in 2004, unanimously, that the settlements are a violation of Article 49 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. The entire world, except for Israel, recognizes that the settlements are a violation of international law. They continue to expand relentlessly. Uh, whatever, uh, you know, soft language comes out of the mouths of Western politicians, the, the reality on the ground gets worse every day for the people of Palestine. And all of us, I must say, all the parties in this country, including my own, uh, need to stand up more vigorously for the rights of the Palestinian people and demand that the settlements not only uh, cease to be expanded, but that they be dismantled forthwith and that the Palestinian people be given, in accordance with the international consensus, a viable state along the 1967 borders. Dimitri Lascaris, I really appreciate you coming on. I know you're on the campaign trail and every minute matters. So uh, I uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Charmaine. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.